state has failed to do its moral duty. In the 18th century, the mentally retarded were often ignored, punished, and exploited. Because people must begin to care about their fellow man. Today, we no longer punish the mentally retarded. We don't exploit them either. We have come a long, long way. Now, we ship them 25 miles out of town to a state-operated institution and forget them while they decay from the black and the black. Because nobody cares condemns the mentally retarded to a bare existence in facilities like Penhurst. I didn't believe in ghosts at all until I stepped foot in this building. The 2,800 children, young and old alike, residing within the confines of Penhurst, they have been abandoned and placed at the mercy of the state. Penhurst was first opened 60 years ago when the answers to the problem of mental retardation were considered to be segregation and sterilization. These children can be helped, and they are depending on society. The children, as they are all called, who are rotting in their cages, cribs and beds, can thank society for their dreadful plight. Everything from shadow figures to things touching you to whispers in the ear. And I literally felt like someone was trying to get me back out the door. Turn right on Highway 100. Okay, so we just left the hotel room. And then we're heading up to Penhurst to start filming. Anytime that you walk into this facility of Penhurst, careful what you wish for. When you ask to be touched, you will be touched. What you ask for in this building will happen. 2,800 retarded children there. We'll be hoping and praying that the governor hasn't forgotten that. When you open that door to be touched or anything else, you better be careful what you wish for. Knock on something loud for us right now. What the f Wait, stop, stop, stop. stop. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. What is it? I am telling you, there is somebody standing right freaking in front of me. Right now, me and Sean staying in here at Penhurst State School and Hospital. We're going to be doing an investigation in the Mayflower building tonight, which was where they kept a lot of the children at Penhurst. And as you can see, there's a bunch of different buildings all over the property. All the original playground equipment that was here back, you know, when this place opened in 1903. One of the big claims of activity is being touched or being shoved or being scratched so hopefully with any luck we'll capture some of that stuff tonight people that don't know how else to interact with you except for you know possibly pushing or physical doesn't mm -hmm. mean they're violent necessarily but they're you know that's why I think a lot of times it's interesting the interaction you get paranormally in these places because it's not always a voice sometimes it is physical but it doesn't mean they're trying to hurt you it means it, they didn't know how else to interact right, with you. That's some always touch yeah. and so you, feel. And... So you're pushing, you know, getting pushed almost down a stairwell doesn't mean they're trying to hurt you. Mm -hmm. It's trying to get your attention. And some of the, the, the sadder EVPs that we've gotten in these places, you're starting to hear their, their speech impediments and things like that. You know, and it's not to be mean, it's, it, it's, but it's like we've had ones that sound like, you know, sad, where, mm -hmm. you know, they were obviously, uh, you know, had issues. And, uh, and you can hear it in the voice. It's not, it's not that it wasn't a crystal clear recording. It actually was, and they just can't say it any other way. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I think, you're gonna, I think you're gonna encounter a lot of that. What would you like? If I can give you anything I could in the world, what would you want? Uh, I'd like to get out of Penhurst. Would you rather have money or would you rather leave Penhurst? I'd rather leave Penhurst. <laughs> Even if you didn't have any money? That's right. I would go down to the hospital to work. Uh -huh. To work for uh, sick, sick people. Take care of sick people. Somewhere around 1968, Bill Baldini came in and did a piece on it, which was called Suffer the Little Children, and it displayed the overcrowding and atrocities that happened to the patients over that time. These are some of the sights and sounds of Penhurst, the state institution for the mentally retarded. It's located in Spring City, Chester County. In 1908, when the institution first opened, the man in charge bitterly complained to the state 
that the conditions were already overcrowded. All right, so we're here in the Mayflower. We just went to uh, night vision. We're all the way up on the third floor to do a sweep. Then we'll head down to the second and then the basement. We've had a few people tell us uh, that this third floor is pretty active, so we'll see what happens. On the third floor, you experience feelings of dread, uh, a feeling of oppression, sickness. It was on the third floor, one of the back stairwells, where I heard a whisper in my ear that I couldn't make out, never did, but I was also touched when I had my back to that stairwell. Inside this building, I was pushed uh, up the flight of stairs walking to the third floor. Uh, it was during the daytime, and uh, just basically walking around, checking the place out, and uh, went around the corner, started walking up the stairs, and something ran right into the back of me, and I fell flat on my face. And she was smiling, and then all of a sudden she started crying, and I could just feel that emotion. Um, and she said my mom used to sing that to me. Um, I don't know why she left me here. I really like my mom. We're up here in complete darkness. Remember, we can't see you. If you're patient here, please give us a sign. If there's a child here who's taken out of your home and put here with no one to visit you, and you have something to say, can you come in here? Can you make a noise for us? Must have been really lonely. We feel bad for all the children and all the adults that were kept here. If you could see us or hear us, please just give us a sign. There, right there. That was a good, wait, stop, 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 stop. That was a good sign. We appreciate it. Oh shit, something just walked in oh there. My God. Come on, what get up right here. The right there. Holy shit. Yeah. Get up here. It came this way. No, it came this way. Get up here, Sean. Listen, we, I need somebody in front of the camera. Listen, we appreciate you making that noise for us. We just came to visit you. Uh, Craig, do you see that back there? Yeah. Do you hear the footsteps? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'll see it. I'll see it. Do you get more this time? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see it's that block out that light. Yeah, it was a full dark shadow ran right across this one. We have a family member here. We're trying to find them. We don't quite know which building they're in. His name's Johnny. Johnny, can you talk? Yes. Do you like it here at Penhurst? No. How about the other kids, the ones that can talk? Do they like to talk to you too? Yes. Do you like to talk to them better than the kids up here? Yes. They covered his eyes one day. He was being mean. You have just heard about Johnny. He's been causing discipline problems here at Penhurst. So they thought they would send him to Q2. Why are you here in Q2, John? I did something well I wasn't supposed to be doing. So they punished you and put you here? Yes. Do they do this all the time to you, John? Yes. Bang on one of those doors for us. Did you leave this floor or are you still up here? Were you a patient here? We're going to leave this floor. This place seems to have the reputation of the activity uh, that is almost second to none to some people. This building itself 
you know, forget the other buildings that, that Pennhurst has. And I turn around, and in the doorway, the figure, right at the height of a child, she sticks her head out, she turns, she looks directly at me, turns her head back, and pulls completely out of view. When I looked at the thermal footage of this, there was a 32 degree temperature difference. When I first heard the story of Penhurst and what happened here and, and watched uh, Suffer the Little Children and saw what was going on, you know, that if that doesn't touch your heart, I don't know what does. You know, the things that happened here are, it's extremely sad, you know, knowing that kids were dropped off here as, as babies and lived their whole lives here without ever seeing their parents again. You know, growing up in an environment that was so hostile and so uncaring, you know, that, that hurts your soul. A little girl was poking me on the back of the leg and running down the hall laughing and then she came back and did it a second time. It was a very clear poke. When I was up here by myself and you were making that knocking noise back here, could you do that again? If the little girl's up here, my name's Josh. Can you tell me your name, please? I mean, this hall, I don't know if you can tell from the voice, but this hall echoes. So you keep, you hear a sound and then like. If you're back there, can you make one big loud noise for me? Mr. King is who they refer to as the dark, evil spirit here at Penhurst. And I think he may be up here with us right now. Did you just shut that door? I got that on film. Holy What I'm going to do is... Right now I got the camcorder plugged in, I'm going to hurry up and unplug it and put the battery in and then we'll head down there and see what the hell is making that noise. Okay, so I just put the battery in, I'm going to grab the camcorder, all kinds of shit happened down here. We're going to run down here. I'm gonna leave my zoom mic back there. So I don't wanna have to unhook that, but from right down in this area, I keep hearing a loud a loud knock. If you're back here, could you make that noise again for me, please? I heard you earlier. Right there. Knock on something real loud for me. I know you've got the energy. I'm up here all by myself. My walkie-talkie's all the way down there. Were you a patient here at Penhurst? My heart is racing. Please show yourself to me. And that's the thing, I don't like being in here. Alone. Because if something does happen, I have no way of contacting them. I don't even want to walk back there. I'm telling you, this whole this whole area just got so uneasy earlier.
Mr. King, are you up here with me? Okay, I'm done up here, my interview. I'll let somebody else come up here and... Okay. What in the f***? Okay, I'm done. I'm gonna send Sean up here. Screw this. I need a doctor or a patient to come help me out of bed. Could you come help me? Okay, so right now I'm sitting in a hospital bed. Rocky, Sean, and Greg left the room. I don't know if you guys can see the bed I'm in. This is an actual hospital bed from Penhurst. So a patient had laid on this bed and this mattress. The children, as they are all called, who are rotting in their cages, cribs, and beds, can thank society for their dreadful plight. If this was your bed, and you don't like me in it, come take me out. You may have been handicapped in life, but now that you've moved on, you don't have those handicaps, those handcuffs, those chains that kept you from being part of society. Now you can do what you want to do. Now I'm sitting laying on the bed right here. Okay, let him come to me. Come on, touch me. So these are actual chairs from the hospital. And I don't know if you can see, but the chairs had seat belts for restraints. And they looked like they were, you know, small enough for a child. Sean, you want to restrain me and then Oh, these chairs are not comfortable. Okay, so I'm sitting in this chair. We know for a fact that they kept you locked in this chair, strapped down like an animal. Shackled like prisoners, punished, because they cannot control themselves and their illness. Were you one of the patients that were kept in one of these chairs? What the f*** is that? Hey, Sean. Sean. Ouch. Okay, so I'm gonna walk down the hallway here. Did you hear that? What was that? It was right in this room. Right That's here. Where I wanted you to be completely alone. Where you actually? I know, but I wanted you to have it that came, feeling. You came in there. Because I think with you sitting back there and actually having that feeling of actually being alone, you know, yelling out for somebody, mm -hmm. that just gave it, you know, I don't know if you ever see what I mean. Yeah. Because you're sitting back there and you yeah. No, it sounded like something was right freaking next to me. Someone was walking down this hall. Did you hear that? Uh-uh. Yeah. It's not like the gravel on the floor just. Yeah, we out. heard it too. But we, it sounded like it was in the hall. Too. Let's take, let's hit the basement, take on that aggressive spirit, show him that this isn't his house no more. The spirit in the basement that worked here, whether he was working in the, you know, the, the boiler room type of area, but it's certainly in the basement. He seems to stay there. There's another entity, a man, 
who is extremely psychopathic. He hates people. He hates people like me who are sensitive. And the reason he does is because we can call him out on the abuse and the torture that he inflicted on children here. He's intelligent. He responds, I was also scratched on the back of my shoulder by this man. I have video and I have photographic evidence of this man scratching me. Just kind of looking around and I went to go walk back outside and I heard the loudest scream I've ever heard in my life. You know, to the point where I was like, okay, I'm not going to go check what that was. <laughs> I closed the door, I went up to the gate and just hung out up there. You know, it, it sounded like someone was being murdered, it was that loud. There's just no doubt. I mean, it's a crowbar being picked up and thrown at your head by a guy that I said he's getting really angry um, and he's very threatening is a very clear indication. Him banging on a cage that we were standing in shortly thereafter. Um, shoving, touching, a lot of touching goes on here and one of my main things that I'm saying is, and even when we're doing EVPs, turn the lights out and they say touch us if someone's here and I'm always like don't touch me I just don't it's my one like <laughs> I don't want to be touched no one at Penhurst pays attention to that I mean it's a lot of touching a lot of touching of the hair you know poking tapping um, shoving down steps by someone that's more violent um, and we know who exactly who he is but this is the only room in the Mayflower building that's got the padded room for sound, and if you look over here, it's busted out now because of vandals, but there used to be a double-sided mirror, so you know they could see what was going on in the room and then you couldn't see him. And the guy that they call Mr. King, which we named the Punisher, is we believe that he's the guy that came in here anytime any kids weren't listening or acting up. He was the one that gave out the punishments. And they weren't always nice. So this guy's a real big creep. He can only pick on children and women, but he can't pick on four guys down here. But just as in life, when you were a coward, you are a coward in death, too. Did you just feel that breeze go right? It was low. It was around my knees. Uh-huh. You like being called a coward? Was there a reason you had to hide behind that glass? You want to hit somebody, come hit one of us. We're taking over this building now. Officially tonight, the Mayflower building is our building. There'll be no more punishments. There'll be no more tying people down. None of that stuff. You go by our rules now. Stop. Was that you? Knock on something loud for us right now. You hear that behind me? Mm -hmm. like There's awesome. something directly behind me because I can feel it. Just stay right there and see if it touches you. I want to face it. I think that's why most of that shows up when yours wrong. Shit! Stop! 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 I'm only good. Was that you? Holy Go in here. I can't see what's even in this room. When I got a horse for a I can't see Was that you in here? Something's down here. Something's like rubbing my Are you pissed that we called you out? You're not going to scare Josh out of this building. He told you he's taking it over. I mean, that's almost as loud. 
is what I heard when I was on the second floor by myself. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting the hell out of here. I was freaking a whole bunch. I mean, it wasn't just something one time. I mean, it was... That was good. Do you have enough energy to do it again? We can't leave again. You heard walking up there? Yeah. Let this thing come to us. I'm not chasing anything down here no more. If it wants us, it's going to come to us. If it's that scared to run from us and can't come up and face us, then heck with it. Whoever's down here with us, we can hear you now. We've got a device that if you speak, we can hear you. Do you have a message that you want to give to a staff member or a loved one? I do recommend not overly provoking. The reason I say that is because be careful what you wish for. When you ask to be touched, you will be touched. And when you open that door to be touched or anything else, you better be careful what you wish for. Ouch. Man, I just got fucking pinched. Oh, well, don't call it out. Oh, I don't know if I got pinched or it felt like a freaking needle or something. They said don't come to the basement and ask for something you can't handle. I didn't call yeah, it out. Did. I just told it to come yeah, to us. Did. He called it out. We did. Come on, you want to take Sean on? Here he is. Take him on. Man. <laughs> I can still feel it like freaking poking or something or pinching. Did you hear, hear that, that? Mm -hmm. Grab that thing and let's walk back there to where we heard that loud bang. It just feels like something's going to freaking run out and grab you and drag you into the darkness. I'll never see you again. Mr. King, did we offend you when we were down here last time? Did you abuse children in here? We've got a baby right here. These kids came in here and they enjoyed toys like this. We're gonna leave the basement. You want us to leave? Ooh. Did you hear that? No. It goes no. Mm -hmm. We're gonna leave. Is that okay with you? No, uh, yeah. Is that what it's saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Please. I got cold chills. Yeah. You guys hear any cold chills? Are you in this room with us right now? Hair on my back, right? Do you need help? Help? What was wrong? What the f***? Wait, stop, stop, stop. What did you see that? Oh, sh there was nothing standing oh. there. Who's in there? Oh, why? Did yeah. you freaking see that? Did you get on video? Well, I had to. I was freaking filming it. That's how I seen it. I had to put my damn lines off. Dude. There was somebody. Oh, my God. Dude. There was somebody. Oh, my God. There was somebody. Oh my god. I am telling you, there was somebody standing right freaking in front of me. I already told whoever's down here that they're not the balls, we're the balls. We run this basement. No more kids are going to be hurt. I can't see. We're going to do what we want to do. Stop right here. Did you hear that? What the hell? What the hell is that?
Do the people outside love you? Do they care about you? Well, I haven't been around them to, been, not been around them enough to, to, to see that. But do you think they care about you? Uh, I think so. Who cares about you? None of my parents don't care for me. How about other people? The other people, they don't care for you. They just want to look for trouble, that's all. How about the people who don't live in Penhurst? Do you think they care about you? No. The retarded have been ignored, forgotten, and pushed out of our minds much too long. In some cases, their feeling of being abandoned has stunned their progress. Others have just become more bitter. Do you have a lot of visitors, Calvin? No, I don't have nobody to been here. I mean, I've been in all these years when I came to Dubai, I was a little baby. When was the last time you had a visitor here? 1940. 1940. They walked out on me. Who walked out on you, Calvin? My sister did. nothing you can do to me. I says, well, before this day is out, you're going to find out what I can do for you. And then I had to start thinking about what I could do. I didn't know what I could do. So about one o'clock, a detail man came in, and I asked him what the most painful injection was that he had that wouldn't do any harm to the patient. And I set this up and got him over on his cottage about seven o'clock that night, and I forced him I mean, I talked him into getting down in bed. I didn't use any abuse on him at all. And gave him this injection. He really hit the ceiling over that. Many of the children are victims of neglect of their own family. And in many instances, it's almost understandable because the parents have no choice in the matter. And it must be a dreadful, dreadful feeling for a parent to know that their own child is living under such conditions. People may not even want to say anything about it because they may be afraid of reprisals. But this condition, this, this horrible, horrible condition at Penhurst must not be permitted to exist. It is, without a doubt, one of the worst residential facilities in the country. There is no reason in this day and age, with federal funds available, for such a place to exist. People must begin to care about their fellow man. The sickening and almost unviewable conditions of the institution is largely due to overcrowding and the lack of personnel to provide elementary care. In many cases, children churn in their own filth for only one reason, lack of assistance. The ones that speak detest the inhumane conditions and hunger for the slightest sign of affection. However, some of them have become so callous to their plight, they've all but given up. They are alone, alone in a world that seems to lack all compassion. Even though some choose to degrade and castigate the children, a number of the patients manage to hang on and maintain their faith in other human beings, as well as something of a higher order. Joe, how long have you been in Penhurst? I was, I was 19 when I first came here. Uh, how old are you now, Joe? 20. You want to go home? Yeah, I like to. Who's going to take you home? Nobody. Why, Joe? They don't want me to. Does anyone ever come and visit you, Joe? No, they don't. Would you like somebody to visit you? Yes. Who would you like most in the whole world? Uh, yeah. A what? What would you like most in the whole world? The whole world? Mm -hmm. oh God. Suffer children to come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God.